in the network, but you know. <laughs> For those of you who may not have been with us on Monday, that's the MAP News Network, the Jacob's Great Communication. And we had fun on Monday and excited about having some more fun today. Our first presentation is How We Step Up, and we specific program in stacking. And oh, looks like we're going to have some exciting fun. I see stackable things on the table there. Our presenters today are Greg Stevens, who is one of our faculty librarians here at Guys Meeting, Rachel Austin Hickey in Developmental Math. And Kayla, welcome to the TPP. Okay, there's, there's, okay, there's, there's a TPP back there that needs to behave, right? So thank y'all. Give, give a nice round. Well, thank you for coming out to listen to us. As you can see from our slide, we will be talking to you today about the certificate programs at TCC which are kind of an overlooked area of um, an, an alternate path, you might say, to academic success and career success. And we're going to introduce you to the concept of certificate stacking, which you may or may not be familiar with. And we will look in our crystal ball and look at what the future of certificates at the college might look like. Um, as you know, there are many different paths to academic and career success. I'm sure lots of you have different sets of degrees and maybe certificates that have gotten you to where you are right now. And right now we're going to play an activity so we can learn what your individual career paths were that took you here. So, we want you to play with the cups in front of you. Please don't drink out of them. They're painted. We, no warranties for food safety. Um, but what we'd like you to do is create a stack which mimics the diplomas, degrees, certificates that you've acquired during your academic career. So, I'm assuming most people in this room have a high school diploma or GED. And if you do, Please put a white rimmed cup on the bottom of your stack. And I have some extra stacks up here if we need them. And using the keys in front of you or up top, up, up, up on our slide here, create your individual stack. Once you've created your stack, look at the stacks on your table for the other people. And if somebody has a very interesting stack, we'd like you to talk to that other person, find out what their story is. We'll give you a few minutes to do this, and then we're going to come back as a group to discuss this. they would like to share. Want to share your story with us? Don't make me call on people. Look at Erica Jarman. Tell us about your stack. Well, 
step is very simple. I got my high school diplomas. I went to Virginia State University for my undergrad, um, got my BS in biology, and I got my master's at Virginia State University as well. That was it. <laughs> okay, that's good. That's good. Now, Shannon Smith over here, <laughs> tell us about your stack, which, which is kind of fun looking. Well, I graduated high school. Uh, then I went to Social Technology School, and we had a four-year certificate program. So they have a degree for that. And then, um, actually, one minute, I skipped my associate's degree. Hang on, I lied a little bit. <laughs> so then I got my bachelor's degree at the Old Dominion University in Health Sciences. And now I'm working on my master's in health sciences. And you're allowed to stack it that way if you're working on it or almost there. So you might see somebody over here almost has a PhD or is working on a PhD. Good, good, good. And you've got a certificate too? Uh, teacher certification. Teacher certification, definitely that counts. And anybody else have a lot of green? Joe Hurd has green. Tell us about your certificate. So I graduated from a very bizarre high school in central Illinois. I went for a bachelor's because I wanted to get out of the sticky little town I lived in. And went to the University of Notre Dame in South Bend. Did a career of 22 years. Uh, won a National Science Foundation scholarship, just to explain the certificate part of it, because I forgot about it. And uh, scored an Illinois teaching certificate, and then finished through a program at University of Illinois in my master's. And was a finalist for the state of Delaware for the principal search, so I almost had a type 75, but I came to TCC instead. <laughs> excellent, excellent. All sorts of fun stories. Anybody back here at the TPP table want to share? <laughs> now you're going to cry. <laughs> Come on, Carl, Sherry. Okay, well, we'll, right, well, we'll leave TPP alone since we've got Kayla up here. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, as we see, if you look around the room, there are quite a few people here who do have green in their stack. Green is certificate. Could be a teaching certificate, or in the case of what we're going to talk about today, it could be an alternative to a diploma. And how we got to this topic is what Rachel will be talking to you about. All right, so we started looking at the fact book to see if we could notice any pattern or anything that jumped out. That's when we, um, we were so, the three of us were very different. And so, Originally, we couldn't find a common ground, so we decided to go to the book to, to for some help. And what we noticed is, don't worry, I, I'm, there's only four numbers on this table that I'm going to talk about. <laughs> so the, the total degrees uh, in 2007-2008 year is this number right here, 2257. And then over the next five years, by the end of 2011, it increased to 3298. Okay? So those are the degrees we were. Those are uh, AAs and ASs. Then we looked at the certificates, and the certificates, total certificates in the 2007-8 academic year were 314, and then by 2012, it went up to 489. So there's, there's obviously by far more degrees awarded than certificates. However, when we looked at the percent increases, and we looked at the actual numbers, because I'm a math person, I'm going to do it. So we noticed there was a 46% increase in the number of degrees awarded just in that five year period. And that's huge, especially just over a five year period, which is not surprising because in a recession, most people go back to school. But then we looked at the certificate percent increase and noticed that the, there was a 56% percent increase in certificates. So even though there's still less certificates awarded, there's a higher increase. Okay? So why are people seeking certificates? Well, what's the appeal? We noticed, uh, or, you know, they're, they're shorter in length, and so it's a very short-term goal, so it's, it's easily attainable within a short amount of time. And also, there's a wide range. It's a very uh, versatile type of student. It's not, there's no traditional type of student seeking certificates. And while, in general, we actually have a very young student body, most of the people seeking certificates are people already with degrees or already working professionally, and they're older um, uh, older adults, so they're the older part of our population, <coughs> primarily, right? 
And certificates are also appealing because they can lead either lead directly to employment or promote you within your employment that you currently have. <coughs> so then we looked at the, the strategic plan, TCC strategic plan, and looked at what the certificates contribute towards that strategic plan. And you notice uh, the multiple pathways. Obviously, you know, the degree are, are most common, but a certificate is another pathway that students can take, and it's, it goes right into job placement. Also with the demand-driven program, that's another requirement another, uh, in our strategic plan, and it specifically addresses the needs of the region, and that's important for the here, because certificates are primarily for our local economy, right? The strategic enrollment management. Now this deals with retention, graduation, <coughs> recruitment, you might wonder, well, what do certificates have to do with retention? And, but it gets back to the multiple pathways concept in that a student may originally seek to, to earn an AS degree, but you know maybe that's maybe they get off more than they think. And halfway through they have something happen in their life and, and they might have already earned a certificate and, and even though they didn't quite obtain that AS degree, they can still graduate and earn a credential with a certificate. Okay? And retention as well. So the certificate is just a it's more of a short-term goal, and of course we'd like to encourage them to continue on to the AS3, but it's just more attainable and short. Okay, so we got certificates, but a lot of programs have multiple certificates uh, within one program. And so a stackable certificate is uh, earning a, a one certificate and then taking a few more classes and earning another certificate. And so kind of a working definition by FloridaCollegeAccess.org basically highlights that it's, it's, it's done quickly and it's a credential that leads right to employment. All right, so now we're gonna break down a few, three main areas of certificates offered here. This is by no means an inclusive list of all the certificates. We just pick three areas. Uh, Greg is gonna go through the healthcare programs. Um, Michael's gonna go through the fitness program. And I'm gonna cover some TPP programs. So I'll hand it over to Greg. Thank you. So, again, this is by no means a fully inclusive list, but there are a number of healthcare certificate programs available, most of which are right here at the Gasbini Center. Um, dental assisting is still here on main campus with a soon-to-be lovely remodeled um, lab office area for them. Um, but we also have surgical technology with our very own Shannon Smith. We have sonography, we have the pharmacy technician program. But what I'm going to talk to you about today, because it is a beautiful, stereotypical example of certificate stacking, is our EMS, Emergency Medical Services Program. So, let's say you are someone who is interested in perhaps becoming an EMS person. What do you do? Well, the first step on your pathway is to become an EMT, an emergency medical technician. That's a certificate, and here at TCC, that's one semester. You're done quick and easy. So you take our one semester, you take the national certification exam, and you can get a job as an EMT. Well, <coughs> sounds good, but EMTs are kind of the, the low man on the totem pole for the EMS services, which means low pay. You'll get a job, You'll get paid. You probably want to move up, though, if you like being EMS. So that's when you would come back to TCC and you'd work on your paramedic certificate. It's a little longer, three semester hours, but you've also got more job responsibilities, so we, we do keep you here a little longer. And it is higher pay. But, and again, after three semesters, you can take the national certification exam for paramedic and you could go out and get a paramedic job. But, if you really want to set yourself apart in the job market, you could come back to TCC yet again and get our critical care transport certificate. Not a lot of people have done this so far. So if you're that smart paramedic who wants to set yourself apart in the job market, you come back, stack a critical care transport certificate on top, <laughs> You're a lot more marketable. Now, I do want to point out that at this point here, the paramedic, you can get the certificates, 
Or you can take a few extra classes in general education and get an AS degree, which is actually what about three quarters of our students do here at the college. Only about a quarter of them go to the, the route where they just get the certificate. So <coughs> there's a good placement rate for our paramedics. You're going to get a job probably, 90%, whether you get a certificate or the diploma. So why do you want to get a certificate? Any idea? No ideas. <laughs> yes, Susie <Susie-D>. Dean. <coughs> well, well, true. I mean, but you can you can work either way. You can get a job with a certificate. Let's get to it. I don't want to take any gen ed courses. You don't want to take any gen ed courses. You want to get out there real quick. Yes. That is one thing. The other thing, though, to consider is. Do you want to stay in this career and get promoted? Because if you're looking to move up, you want to go into management, you're going to need at least an AS degree, probably more likely a bachelor's degree. So it depends on whether you're the student who's thinking short term or the student who's thinking long term. If you're thinking short term, just want to get out there ASAP, you don't want to take those gen ed courses, you get your certificates, get in, get out, get your job. However, you may need to come back, take those gen ed courses, get your certificate, get your diploma, excuse me, and get promoted. So, short term, long term. Now, we look in that crystal ball I mentioned earlier. What's in the future? Now, certificate programs are very workforce driven. So, there's no magic answer that this would be the thing for us. So what I did was I went looking, seeing what other colleges were doing. And for some reason, Ohio is really big into certificate stacking in their community colleges. And something that I saw at a lot of the big community colleges in Ohio was something like this, a multi-competency health technology program, which is kind of a make, it, make your own program in healthcare. You would take two or three different Healthcare certificate programs, such as phlebotomy, EKG. This was actually taken from um, Columbus Community College. And you can basically make yourself a very unique, marketable degree stack. So let's say, for example, I went and got a phlebotomy certificate, and a clinical laboratory assisting certificate, and an ASL certificate. That could make me very marketable in a hospital where I could work front of house as a phlebotomist who could also work with hearing impaired patients, or I could work back at house running the lab samples. So it's, it's, it's um, something to consider, basically designing your own program. Would it work for us? I don't know, depends on market demands. But this is a possible way the college could go. And now I'm gonna hand it over to Kayla, who will talk to you about the certificates out of FIPSI. I want to share with you just uh, a bit of some of the programs that we actually offer out at FIPSI. First, we have our corrections <coughs> program, firefighters, security, and telecommunications. The big money market out at Dipsy or Pat, the Pat Thomas Law Enforcement Academy. Under this umbrella, we have our Florida State Troopers, our Police, Sheriff Department, <coughs> Fish and Wildlife Conservation, and Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. Now, even though Dipsy offers, Pat Thomas offers a phenomenal program, there's some good things that's going on out there. It's a big campus, and just to put some color into their campus, they have a dormitory out there that's on the campus. This dormitory sleeps 200. Um, it's $26 a day. You, it's private, <laughs> as if you were in a hotel. You have your color TV. You have your um, wireless um, remote. 
And there's nowhere in the state of Florida you're going to find a motel for $26. <laughs> okay? Also, another accolade that's really, really great out there, the cafeteria. The cafeteria actually seats 600 students or cadets or officers. You have three meals a day. And all three of these meals are hot cooked meals. We're not talking about your donuts and your coffee. We're talking about your eggs, your sauces, your bacon, and that type of thing. And we know that, you're again, you're not going to find three square meals a day for under $30. Okay? So, with that being said, I am going to talk to you about a possible way that this certificate program or a certificate program can actually set. Our correctional officers, um, take into account, we deal with students all the time. A 19 year old that doesn't want to go to school, too immature, wants to just get into the workforce. He has an opportunity to go at 19 years old, go out, get the certificate, and go into the work world while he's gaining experience as a correctional officer and earn quite a bit of money because they have the medium of the correctional officer here in the state of Florida is about twenty-eight to thirty thousand to start off. So you're coming from your mom and dad's house with nothing and then you're getting this training in about three or four months and you're into the work world. A step up would be our law enforcement crossover. Okay? Now, once that 19 year old has experience, has grown up, has matured, he may change his, change his mind and go into the law enforcement crossover program for the additional two or three months. Okay? But the special part about this law enforcement crossover, we here at TCC, well, they can take classes and earn 15 hours towards their AA or MAS degree. Now, back in the 1980s, a lot of our police department, sheriff department, just our law enforcement department, would allow our officers to go in, you know, with just the basic high school diploma. But according to FDLE, 93% of all of our um, law enforcement agencies are requiring that our officers have their AS degree. So higher education is important. So now you have a 19-year-old student. He's maturing. He's understanding. He's out of your house. Okay? <laughs> and he's driving, you know, in the world. Just briefly, the national median for law enforcement for a correctional officer is 38,907. The medium is 56,980 for law enforcement officers. As you can see, all of us are kind of motivated by money, right? That's about $18,000 difference. So tell me that's not a stepping stone or a step up. Financially, of course on top of the experience that they actually gain. Okay? Now, looking into the future, when we talk about higher education, at FIPSI, we know that we, our correctional officers, our law enforcement officers, so they're graduating at the top of their class. We, our graduation rate it ranges between 90 and 95%, because they, should, they have those guys out there um, being trained at the highest, most standards that's out there. Again, when we talk about higher education, statistics have stated that an educated officer is a better officer, a rational officer. Okay, one who can think through a, a bad situation. One who is not likely to get a disciplinary action or lawsuits because now we're training them to be in a diverse community, diverse situations. As you can see on the table, everybody has different walks of life to where, however they got to where they're at. Now at FIPS, we have, this is a good part, hands-on training. 
I said they have a technical policy. These officers actually get to kick down doors, jump through windows, and play hide and seek. <laughs> but the most important thing for our correctional officers, we have 400 inmates that are on that campus. The first college to have in the United States, Max, to have 400 inmates that's out there on that campus. So when they go to work or in the workforce, they hear things like, recall, count time, and know how, they would know how to operate or this terminology will be foreign to them. So when we look at projective growth, when I looked at the projective growth, according to the Department of Labor, labor one of the things that stayed average and that stayed average in over the last two or three years, the last five years, I'm sorry, the last five years, our law enforcement and correctional officer growth was stable. But because you know, statistics shows again, that we're building more prisons than we are schools. So with more prisons, what do you think you're gonna have to have? Correctional officers. In order to get those guys off the street, you have to have law enforcement officers, okay? Rachel? All right, so when we were splitting up who was going to talk about what certificate, I'm in the math and science area. We don't have the math certificates. <laughs> we don't have biology certificates. <laughs> so in, originally I was intimidated by uh, what was left. Uh, and, but then I looked at it as an opportunity that I got to kind of go outside of my comfort zone and learn about an area that I'm not too familiar with or wasn't at the time. So the Technology and Professional Programs has a, a wide range of certificates and degree programs. These are just most of them, not inclusive again. And when I started looking at these degrees, or these certificates and degrees, uh, I, one of my many majors in college, my first one actually, was accounting. And so I decided to uh, look at the management of accounting degree and certificate and look at what I could have done had I done something. So if I'm right out of high school and I just want to go out to work right away, or if maybe I'm in a, 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 a state position and I would like to gain some skills for promotion or pay raise, the first level of certificate in the management and accounting is the accounting technology specialist. It's just 12 credit hours, four classes, one semester. Okay. And that is one certificate. So you can earn that, take that to your employer, put it on your resume, your visa, and that's a credential. Then, with just two more classes, you could take get the accounting and technology operations certificate, which is just adding uh, microcomputer and business communication in those two classes. Then you earn another certificate. So this is stacking out, so now you've got two. Keep going for nine classes. You could get your accounting technology and management. Now this one, the two the courses that you add are more uh, towards the leadership realm, uh, public speaking, customer service, and management. So you're adding that to your, um, if you're going to take a leadership position of some sort. Now after these, these are three separate certificates that you can earn just for accounting and management. And then if you wanted to keep going, you would of course get your uh, AS degree in business management. And that's 64, uh, yeah, 64 credits, which is quite a bit more than 27, but just to have three already that you could um, list as your credentials, that's pretty impressive. Okay. All right, so the, the choice of whether to get a degree or a certificate in the business realm uh, has a lot to do with our local economy or the economy of wherever you live. So in, in Tallahassee, this is an interesting area. We all know that we kind of have a, a, a weighted heavily with uh, students and legislatures. And, and there's, there's a lot, there's not a very diverse working economy right here. So for the business, because of all the universities, the two universities, Florida State and, and Van U, and uh, all the degrees and certificates that we uh, give out here, there are way more students coming out with business credentials than there are jobs here to support them. So we have a, a very small local demand for business certificates and degrees. But statewide, if you just go outside of Tallahassee, if you go to Tampa, Orlando, or Miami, uh, there's, there's several of those regions that have a high demand for these certificates and degrees. Okay. 
Locally, though, our biggest employers are, of course, our, our state and local, our state and city government, our higher education institutions, of course, and the two hospitals. Now, outside of those three, Publix is the number one employer in this area, and they are very involved with TCC, and they actually help shape the way a lot of our classes are even created. Okay. So, to the, the TPP uh, division uses, uh, they have an advisory board, a business advisory board that helps them uh, develop their courses, and they, they seek guidance from these uh, local experts. And there's 13 of them. Uh, for example, there's um, the, the Red Hills uh, Power Sports is the franchise guy. The Tallahassee Orthopedic Clinic is the HR person. Uh, the public general manager is on the advisory board. So several local experts who are, are pretty big leaders in, in our area help advise the TCC faculty to create um, these courses to keep it up to date. So they kind of, they act as a liaisons, I guess, to our, our programs here. So the local incentives for individuals to get a certificate versus a degree. Publix has a tuition reimbursement program that if you work for them, and as long as you work for at least a thousand hours, you get tuition reimbursement for any course you want to get an A and a B towards a business degree. Okay? But in addition to that, state employees get free classes. Now, it's not just free. It's free, but you're on standby. <laughs> you, you have, there's a window that you can uh, register for the course. And any open slots, just like if anybody's been on standby on a plane before, any open slots and they get them. Because the teacher gets, uh, the, excuse me, the professor gets paid the same, so they, it, it, it's kind of a win-win situation for our, our local economy and for the college. Then, in general, a lot of businesses want to, and in fact, a lot of the businesses on the advisory board, they will send their employees back to get certificates in particular. Individuals who a lot of times already have a bachelor's degree or even a master's degree, and but there, there, there's certain skills that they need to either retrain on or, or, or bump up their, their skill set. And so they'll send them back to get either a certificate or um, in, in public case, you could actually get a full degree. So. And one other incentive, this is, this is kind of a loophole. <laughs> An incentive to get a degree, as a, or to get a, a degree as, as opposed to a certificate. If the student just wants to get a certificate, not all certificates are financially eligible. However, we all would like to get them in the door, get them in the pipeline, and then, and then maybe, you know, like once you achieve a short-term goal, sometimes it's easier to set the next goal and then set the next goal as soon as you keep achieving it. So we could advise them to just sign up for an AS degree, even though you really only just want to get a certificate. And then it's the same classes that you need for an AS degree, but if you, designate a degree instead of a certificate, you'll be financially eligible. So it's not really lying, it's just, we're just hoping that we're gonna change the <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. So the future forecasts, um, to get my crystal ball information, I interviewed Edie e. Strickland, and she's a CPA in the accounting department. And it's all about internet security, cybersecurity, identity theft, and we already know that this is a, a big issue, and it's, it's only becoming more so. And also in TPP, even though most of my stuff has been on business, in the TPP there is a, the St. Mark's Power is a, is a big manufacturing employer locally here, and there, in, in a few years, many of their employees are, are they're, they're 55 and plus, they're gonna be retiring soon. And so in, in about five or 10 years, there's gonna be a big shortage in the manufacturing labor right here locally. But manufacturing jobs are not what they used to be. You need to be skilled and you need to even have a certificate, you know, at least a certificate to work in a manufacturing company. Right? So that's gonna probably be a big source of, of hot certificates in the future. Right, and we're gonna give it over to Kay Love to take over for opportunities and challenges with Alrighty, we have covered um, all the pathways for our certificate programs. They all um, have great benefits. When we're, when we're discussing time, money, experience, career focus, training, and availability. And when we speak about availability, again, like Rachel said, we actually um, offer in all our certificate programs financial aid, state waivers, and scholarships. Okay, but when we're talking about tracking, um, 
there's some issues there. Because as we force our students to declare a degree, then the financial aid portion drops off. So with that being said, do you guys know or can you guys think of any other challenges or opportunities, you know, that we may have for our students? Ms. Brenda? No, you have five minutes left. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just spoke. <laughs> <laughs> Glad I came in, <coughs> excuse me on this, because you happen to hit on something I'm incredibly excited about. One of the things I have felt for a long time is that we should always, whenever possible, make sure that everything we do is stacked. Um, and so it's exciting for me to hear your focus on this. But the other thing that uh, is really emerging, and I think we have an opportunity, and I'm going to ask for volunteers, by the way, at the end to get ready. Um, there's a lot of dialogue around the country about uh, badges, about micro badges or micro credentials. <coughs> and uh, back here right here. A lot of conversation about badges and micro credentials and the role that they might play in creating the stackable credentials you're talking about. One of the things you probably don't know is that when we made a decision to select Workday as our new ERP system, one of the compelling reasons that I was drawn to Workday was that in designing Workday, they are out front and building it in a way that will allow us to embed badges and micro-credentials, that will allow us to give competency-based uh, uh, credits for education, that will allow us to do prior learning assessments. So all of this sort of creativity that you're talking about is exactly the direction that, that I'm absolutely convinced we need to go. Now, having said that, I need to know who would like to work on creating a system here at TCC on badges and micro-credentials. I, I need some of you to step up and say, I'm willing to learn about it. And there's a lot to learn about it. I, uh, I took my first MOOC, and I took a MOOC <laughs> on uh, badges and micro-credentials, and now I know enough to be dangerous. <laughs> but there's so much opportunity for us, and particularly in stack of the credentials. But uh, you don't have to raise your hand now, but I'm, I, I need a core of faculty to say, we want to take this on and we want to help build because when we get the Workday project implemented, I'd like to be on the forefront nationally of recognizing how we can create these stackable opportunities for students. How's that for nothing? <laughs> <laughs> Great job. <laughs> That's it.